What was life like before you ever even heard the name Eleanor Williams? Oh God, life, life was absolutely brilliant. It was, it was, it, it was normal. It was good, it was just, you know, you just going on a day by day, living your life, enjoying it. Uh, four kids. Four, four children, brilliant partner, enjoying life, you know, just, just normal. So tell us what happened. How did it first come across uh, your desk that you were accused of something that you hadn't well, done? Uh, uh, God, but anyway, we made the claims. I got arrested in 2019, 7-7. Out of the blue? Out of the blue. Totally out of the blue. But prior to that, for a year and a half, local, I've had issues, as in like social media going on, and it being, I'm a paedophile enabler. I'm, I orchestrate it, and it was, but well, that was just local, and a lot of people knew, and it was just always dismissed. Nobody really cared. You know, they were like the extreme, the, 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 the few people that are involved in this, they were the, few, they were the extreme far right, mm. and they were just pushing this agenda. After you were cleared of the of doing any wrongdoing from their investigations, the mud had stuck oh, by oh, that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. Tell us what happened. What you, you got all these that were that just pushing the agenda of that. This is it. It's a mass cover up. And that was that was the whole target. Then that became, uh, it's a mass cover up. He's getting away with it. He's it, the town's corrupt. The police is corrupt. The council's corrupt. He's got. Uh, he pays off everything. And that was just like, I got. Are we living in Pakistan? What was that like for your kids? Uh, it was horrendous for my kids. Absolutely horrendous. And that, as at, at that point, uh, in 2019, we were struggling as it was because my, son, my eldest son started to self farming. Mm -hmm. He dropped out of college because people were calling uh, and he, was, he was, had one of the ice cream vans and he was constantly getting cold. And, you know, people talking about your dad, you, you know. It, it's the worst possible allegation, allegation. As well, isn't it? And, he, and this is now two weeks prior to me getting arrested. I walked in. I'm going to the bathroom, it's uh, and it's half one in the morning, and his bedroom lights on, and I walked in, and you see his son, all cut. Uh, it's it's yeah. devastating, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. And we did it. We all tried to keep strong by not sharing what we're going yeah. through, and you, you know just to keep that no, some sort of normality. And at you're home. thinking it'll be fine. fine. I've yeah. not done anything. anything. Yeah. It'll be okay. But this is just rumours at the time. Mm. Then two weeks later, I'm getting arrested, and then a year later, this post goes up, and you know it's. It, Business that was ruined, it totally ruined. And you just think, wow, what do we do here? And then obviously the police get involved and you've got all, all the death threats. Mm. You know, I, like, I've got messages like people that were saying, we're going to rape your wife uh, in front of your kids and then we're going to burn your house, right? And uh, it just, all my addresses got published uh, out there in social media. My picture was almost uh, from social media, was everywhere. And you just, you just got to have eyes on the back of your head. You lost your parents as well, did I, you, during I lost this my, time? my father, my mother, and my father-in-law in the midst of all this. Mm. And my nephew died in the M1 car crash last oh. year. The police had cleared your name, quite yeah. rightly, yeah. from any wrongdoing. And yet but, your life was still hell. Hell, yeah. Well, prior to the, the pause, when that went up, they, they did a, a thorough investigation, multiple agencies. Some inspector came out and did a live interview saying there's no grooming gang in thing. You know, we've done a two-year thorough multi-agencies uh, inve investigation into Barry Fens. There's no, no, no such thing of it. But What was the relationship like with you and the other accused men? I, I had no relationship with them. You're not no, friends with him, no, you're not all... No, now, uh, just to, to a couple of uh, days before Christmas, I reached out to Jordan. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, supporting him. It's like, it's, it's the same as my son. Right. Yeah, and what he's been through is horrendous. You're my 18-year-old just listening to the, the abuse who was going through so much. And him having to be now for 73 days, you're in a, in a sex offender's... So week. this is the guy that was actually remained in custody. Yeah. Now he, I suppose, didn't have your resources, your fight, your determination. It, no, no. And so he got swept into that system without anybody there to defend him. And yet, look at that. They had him in remand when they arrested me. Why couldn't they have linked the dots then? Yeah. And understood, hang on, we've already got this gentleman yeah. being accused by Eleanor Williams. We've got another one a few years earlier that's been accused, and now an Asian grooming gang has appear, uh, appeared out of nowhere. You know, how could they actually not see what was happening? And is this why Barrow Police Station then refused me? Because Barrow Police Station, ha ha there's yeah. some discrepancies, or there's, you know, incompetence somewhere that's taken place. How do you feel now, 
having been through this horrendous experience that you and your family have been through, about people who are accused of sexual offence allegations retaining their anonymity until a time in which they're found guilty? I think that's a must, 100%. It, 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 it needs to be, because it's safeguarded. It's what we went through as a family in Jordan, and the, you know, how the exposure goes and how much damage that does to a person. Mm. And if you're not, it's guilty till proven innocent, or is it innocent till proven guilty? Which way is it, you know? Until not being sentenced or verdicts or being proven, you can't, because what damage it does. And there's, you know, people have taken their lives. You know, I attempted suicide, Jordan did, Cameron Bibby did, because the names were out there and they were innocent people. And how can you do that? And, and it's, and what sticks? Yeah. There's always be a certain minority that will say yes. What do you think about the sentence that she got? Uh, obviously, I'm going to say not long enough, mm. but it was the judge's decision. I, we as a family were happy as soon as we got the guilty verdict. That was good enough for us. And if that the, the judge think it's that was fair sentence, it is. But I, one, one of my questions is with this. It should have been a bit more, it should have been a bit sterner to in a way to more, put, set more of an example. But what, when is she released? Where's she going to go? Is any man, your son, my son, any children, any men, wherever she goes, are we safe? I just want to know when she's released, I hope we're consulted and yeah. we're taking the, the safeguarding measures are put in place and she's monitored. Yeah. Mohammed, thank you. Thank, you. thank you. you so much for talking to thank us you. as well. I think it's a really important story and you raise so many uh, fascinating issues. Thanks. Thank you.